we intentionally waited on doing this job until I knew they had thrown their primary swarm. Uh, it's been a couple weeks back. I can't remember if I posted that video. There wasn't much, but um, there was a huge limb had fallen out of one of these trees during a storm and it was laying over here on the ground. Um, and the homeowner called me and, and said he had a swarm and I got over here and had a basketball sized swarm. What's going on, bee herders? You can see Mike back there in deep contemplation, deep thoughts. Why? Because we've got something a little different for you today. Now, today we're over at a friend's house, once again in Geneva County, Alabama, Hartford, the lost honeybee capital of the world, apparently. Um, and we're going to do a forced abscond. So, like I said, we're over at a friend's house can see right over there is his saltwater swimming pool. For quite some time he's had a colony in this oak and they kind of make it difficult this time of year in the heat to enjoy your swimming pool because there's a water source and a mineral source for them and they love that. Um, so the bees are over drinking off the ladder and the diving board and the concrete deck whenever they're out splashing really can't have a good time in their swimming pool. So we're going to help him out and get these bees out of this tree. Now, forced abscon is no fun um, because a couple of things are going to happen at the end of this if we're lucky. Um, we're going to end up with probably some irritated bees. And that's all we're going to end up with is bees. Hopefully we get the queen and the bees, but no comb, no resources. So doing an abscon kind of is like ordering a package of bees. You get a bunch of bees and nothing else. Fortunately for us, we have resources um, in the form of comb out of other colonies and brood out of other colonies and food out of other colonies that we can give these bees and kick them right back into gear. Um, definitely going to have to feed them because we're right at the end of the nectar flow. They're not going to have time to replenish uh, their food stores. So they'll need feeding to, to get them through the rest of the year and hopefully to the fall flow. Brothers flying overhead in the Lakota this morning. So there are some other options. I mean, really, you're, you've got three options when removing a colony, three major ones. We can do a cutout, which unless we cut the tree down, that's not happening. We can do a trap out. I'm not a big fan of trap outs, but just because they take so long. Normally six weeks at a minimum, um, and you end up with a bunch of tree, or bees outside the tree. So really for six more weeks, they'd still be dealing with a colony of bees, even though we were trapping them out. And we want to, this is June 1st, we want them to enjoy the swimming pool season. So we're gonna go ahead and do a forced abscon today. So to do that, we're gonna kind of take advantage of the honeybee's survival instinct. We're gonna shift them into swarm mode by using some smoke, nice and slow, um, so that they gorge themselves on honey and are ready to build comb. Although, like I said, we're gonna give them comb, but at least they bring that honey out with them. And then uh, we'll slowly increase the pace and the amount of smoke and, and uh, repel it until hopefully we get them forced out. We're gonna vacuum them up again. Um, I could strap a box up there beside it um, and put some comb and other things in it and force them out and let them march into that box. Uh, but I, we're just gonna go ahead and use the vac today to get this job done uh, and take care of my friend here and get these bees away. So should be big fun. Um, it's not a swarm right now, but we're going to turn it into a swarm. Right, Mike? Absolutely. So it's going to turn into a swarm before it's all said and done. Stay tuned. This, this should be big we fun. Like swarms. Yes, we, we love swarms. It's always a swarm. We'll see if we can get them out of there. I just hate to leave all that comb and everything. And we'll show you what we do at the end to hopefully keep another swarm um, from occupying it and establishing a colony. So again, stay tuned. This ought to be real fun. Always. Nice. It's getting hot already too, which is always a bonus. It's kind of cool. People see this on their hives quite often. And wonder what's going on. Come on, camera. 
bees are line dancing or washboarding. It's kind of going back and forth, back and forth. There's no definitive research and science out there that tells us why they do that, why they washboard. A lot of different theories, um, but based on the research I've done and, and what I believe is you see this more often uh, as the nectar flow is ending and there's not a lot of work to be done. There's not a lot of foraging going on. Um, or you'll see it right like we are right now in the morning before it's really warmed up good and the sun's on the hive. And I believe it's just bored bees. I mean, they're designed to be a very busy creature. God made them that way. And when there's no resources for them to go forage, they've got to find something to do. So people believe they're cleaning. Um, but if it takes them that long to clean up that little spot, we, they're not normal honeybees. They're, they're very efficient at cleaning stuff. So I believe they're just bored. It just keeps them busy. It's kind of cool though. We're about to get started here. We're going to put a little smoke on them from this entrance um, just to kind of make them believe there's potential fire, forest fire coming and, and begin to get that swarm instinct rolling. And then uh, hopefully we're going to force them down from up there. But we do have a, a, another small problem is that there's actually three entrances. We've got one here, we've got that one. And while I don't see any bees coming and going in that highest one right now, I do know it in the past has been an entrance. So uh, we'll see what, what's happening. They may have propolized it shut. Okay, so like I said, we want to ease these bees into swarm mode. We don't want to go hard and fast on them um, here at the very beginning. So we're just going to start applying a little smoke and let them begin to feel like there's potentially a fire coming and kick them into their swarm mode. And we'll go hard and fast later on. And the problem with this is there's so many irregularities and shapes and little crevices up inside this, uh, this tree that the bees can kind of get in it and partially get themselves out of the smoke. Um, and if you're not careful, you, you'll end up killing bees and killing the queen with, with too much smoke. So, again, we're going to go slow here at the beginning. We'll just let them think there's a fire building. Um, and then we'll pick the pace up later on when I'm really trying to force them on out. So if we do this right, we take our time, and we do start seeing bees come out, they're almost going to kind of come out honey drunk. Um, they will gorge themselves on so much honey. Assuming they've got some in there, and they should as well as our nectar flow has been rolling this year. Um, but they'll come out so honey drunk that they're kind of lethargic and, and they don't want to fly around too much. Um, which is great, but it also poses another problem in that now you've got all of these bees going into a vacuum. The honey stomach's full and sometimes they'll start regurgitating in a vacuum and it ends up killing a lot of bees. So there's a lot of factors involved in what we're doing and how we do this to both rescue these bees um, and give ourselves potentially a, uh, a viable colony at the end of this. So again, it's kind of like cooking North Carolina barbecue. Slow and low, or low and slow. One of those two things, uh, two options. It's kind of cool. Fan and trying to draw that smoke, that little bit of smoke we've applied already, draw it out. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we don't want these bees to do what they instinctively want to do and, and move up, go up above that entrance. So I'm going to run up there and put a, a band of honeybee gone above it. So hopefully keep those bees down where we can reach them as we force them out. Um, done it before. Works okay. Doesn't always work. Hope that's what we'll do.
battery acid in your eye. So we've been here a while now, um, kind of playing with them, getting them kicked into, into that swarm mode. And now we're starting to increase the amount of smoke we're putting in, and you can see they're starting to come up and cluster here on the front of the tree. We drilled a hole up there because we know the, the void goes a little higher, so we may end up going a little bit higher and drill another hole yet. Um, this is a pretty substantial uh, hollow in this tree because uh, this entrance is, I don't know, four feet above the lower entrance. I could have sworn previously looking at this colony, they were coming in and out of that knot hole up there, but I've gone up there. Now I can't tell where they are anymore. They are coming in and out of there. It looks like it's a solid, solid limb broke off. Of course, there's another one higher than that. That may have been the one. And I hope that's not the case. But we'll just slowly get them to come out and cluster and we'll start vacuuming them up. Vacuuming them in them in the vacuum in them in them in them in them. Again, just forcing the bees out basically into a swarm cluster. Nice and slow. And, you know, kind of watching for the different types of bees that are coming out. That kind of gives me an idea of how far along we are. Um, I've got foragers that came out pretty early here. Um, the guard bees, receiver bees, some of the, the more mature bees that were near the entrance have come out. The nurse bees are reluctant to come off of that cone. So is the queen. So when I start seeing a significant number of nurse bees coming out, I know we're kind of getting pretty far along and then when I start seeing small high beetle larvae crawling out and small high beetles abandoning ship, I, really, I know I've got, a, got it to them. But I really, I, I don't want that to happen a while from now because if we get there too early, I'm just gonna kill bees and kill the queen. We don't wanna overstress them. As long as they're coming out, I'm not gonna start vacuuming. Um, we'll start pulling them with the vacuum later. It's getting, getting warmer and I just don't like leaving them in the vac box any longer than I have to. Start seeing more dead bees then, so. It's going to take our time, slowly push them out here. They're holding below where I sprayed the, the uh, honeybee gone earlier, so that's good. Just going to keep easing them on out. You can see our cluster is continuously growing as we push them out. You can see they're still staying below that honeybee gone. <coughs> They came out of it. Oh. But they're moving kind of slow and sluggishly, and heck, some of them they can't, they can't even fly. They just crawl out. If they don't stay on the cluster, they just kind of fall down here. Uh, so that tells me they've done what we wanted them to do, which is start robbing out their resources. We'll start vacuuming here in a minute. We intentionally waited on doing this job until I knew they had thrown their primary swarm. Uh, it's been a couple weeks back. I can't remember if I posted that video. There wasn't much, but um, there was a huge limb had fallen out of one of these trees during a storm and it was laying over here on the ground. Um, and the homeowner called me and, and said he had a swarm and I got over here and had a basketball sized swarm on that limb at waist level. It was super easy to catch, beautiful queen. So I'm fairly certain that was the prime swarm out of this colony. It's been a month and a half ago. Uh, so that way I know the numbers had kind of come down. I gave them time to hopefully requeen themselves, uh, but not really drive the population way up. Um, and then we kind of came over here to do what we're doing today. So it's all a chess match, especially when you're trying to get them out of a tree. Maybe we'll win, maybe we won't. Give them a little bit, Mike. Right now we're just using smoke. We may add a little honeybee going on top of our, our fuel pile. I'm using hay, um, dry hay today. Didn't get any pine straw before it got rained on, so we did have a couple bells of dry hay in the barn, so we're using that. And we'll just spray a little honeybee going on top of it. And Just a scent of it a little bit, not a ton of honey going. Okay, that's good. 
normally I would use a different smoker if I'm going to put honeybee on in it, but right now it's the only one we got with us. I know we don't. We got we have that other one, don't we? Yeah, we may use that other one. I try to keep my prime smoker clean. I can clean it, no big deal. Fire cleans it all out. We're still marching. Still coming out. Still in a cluster right below our honeybee zone. Not seeing any bees come out of the hole we drilled, but what it is doing for us is kind of creating a chimney to help suck this smoke up past. Looking in the hole, we can see some comb going up, and I did hit the hollow there, what felt like comb up at that hole. But I'm not seeing any bees come out, which if there were bees up there, I would have thought a few would have come out. Let's see what we get. Just enough vacuum to pull them loose. big clumps of bees and they kind of get hung up in the hose. Small hive beetle in there. Come out with them. Take it away. There's a lot of bees in there we've got to get out. Well it appears that we've gotten all the bees out of here we're going to get out of. Um, I've not really seen a ton of young bees come out. And that could be potentially, and this is my guess, is that they unsuccessfully requeened uh, after that prime swarm we caught two months ago, almost, I guess now, it's June 1st. So yeah, it's pretty close to April, around the beginning of April. I'm not seeing a ton of drones. So I don't think they've kicked into um, uh, laying workers yet. I'm just not seeing a ton of young bees come out. And uh, haven't seen no queen. So it's, it's kind of what you run into sometimes with any removal, but forced abscons, you may never get the queen out, um, especially out of a tree. They may be in a twist off of that uh, hollow inside the tree that, that you just don't have access to and you really can't get smoke in too good. Or sometimes they'll get up in that area and they'll just die in place. They'll, they'll stay there and, and will not leave. I could drill a hundred holes in the tree, kill the tree completely, um, trying to get them out. I'm just not going to do that. Um, so I'm not seeing many bees come out anymore. I'm going to show you where we're at. Just for comparison, I can pretty much cover it with my hand. Uh, I'm not seeing bees exiting anymore. We can see comb inside the hole, and it's fairly newish yellow comb. You can see it in there. Get some light on it. Yeah. There you can see the comb inside the tree. And it, it's attached from above, so you know we're not quite at the top, but we think the top of the colony is not just a few inches, maybe a foot above where we are, where their prime entrance is. Most of it goes down towards Mike, where Mike's been smoking them out of that hole there. So we're about to vacuum up the rest of these, and then we'll seal this thing up and uh, hopefully wrap this show up. I don't think we're going to get a queen today, unfortunately, but... Hey, that's the way it is. We're running around 90% this season, so we're better, so that, that's not too bad. We've got a visitor that you don't want to play with. Velvet ant. Cow killer ant, some people call them. Hanging out from the top of the tree. It's not even an ant. It's a flightless wasp. We got it wrapped up and sealed up. There's a small cluster of foragers that have returned. Um, and they'll continue returning until dark. We'll get those vacuumed up before we leave. Uh, you know, there's going to be bees that show up long after we're gone. That we're out foraging that uh, just gonna have to beg their way into another colony somewhere. Or keep in mind, they're foragers in the last few days of their lives anyway. They're not going to make it much longer. Got basically what equates to a small swarm of bees in the bee box, maybe cantaloupe sized. There's just no more bees coming out. So. Okay, folks, so that was a forced abscon, something a little different for you. We're not done with it yet. 
Uh, basically what we have done is harvested ourselves a package of bees if we had paid $150 and ordered a three pound package. Uh, but we're going to take them home and we're going to put them on drawn comb and we'll pull some frames out of another colony with brood and food and, and really give them a jump start here and kick them right into production um, as a small colony and hopefully build them up through the year. Like I said, there's no queen, so we'll either give them a queen or I'll give them the opportunity to make a queen. I think I'll do the latter um, just to continue the video on this. So, y'all take care. I'll give you a little bit more in just a minute. Okay, folks, we're back in the bee yard from uh, the four stabs gone out of the oak. Uh, like I said, we didn't find a queen. Um, and we've got a moderately sized swarm basically of bees with no queen so how are we going to fix that well, what we did we're going to put them on a box full of drawn comb now, there's a good chance i'm going to shrink these bees down to a nook um, in the next few days but we grabbed some brood off of uh, another colony right over here we got cat brood here cat brood here some eggs uh, this is a pure coat triple wax frame by the way and they really drew it out and we've got some cat brood here, mostly cap here, just a few eggs um, and a little bit of uncapped larva uh, on this other frame. So we're going to put them in, introduce, let them go to work, and then in a couple of days I will probably then come back and add a frame that's got a ton of eggs on it, a ton of very young larva that they can then draw a queen cell um, and create their own queen. And we'll see how that works out. I've done it many times um, and it should work fairly well. But again, that's just a drawback of doing a forced abscon. Uh, like I said earlier, you're basically buying a package of bees or harvesting a package of bees. No comb, maybe no queen sometimes. It's probably 50-50 on an abscon whether you get the queen or not. A much higher percentage on a, on a cutout and trap outs about the same. Um, and we'll have a trap out video for, video for you here pretty soon. So we've got drawn comb, like I said, out of some other colonies. To really give them a start, we're going to feed them heavy as well. And we've gave them some of those frames, as you saw, um, had some beautiful capped honey on it. But we'll probably shrink these girls back down to a nook. And we're going to have to baby them here over the next month or so um, to really give them a chance to build up some before, uh, before winter this year. And then maybe next year we'll have a thriving colony. So you've seen us do this a hundred times. We're just going to set our box on top. And we're going to pull the drawer and let those bees move down onto that cone. It might take them a little while, but it, there's really not enough bees in there for a, a, a 10 frame box um, to protect it, especially now as we go into summer and small hive beetles and beetles are out of control. Um, you know, it's something we fight down here constantly in the southeast. So we'll shrink them down, give them a better opportunity to protect what comb they've had, and I'll just pull this other comb back out and put it back in the freezer and, and use it on another colony. So that's a four stab scon. Um, I really don't enjoy doing them, but sometimes it's, it's all you can do. Um, we'll be doing a trap out here pretty soon. We're going to actually do a trap through trap out uh, and let you see the video of how that works. That one will take six weeks um, to work. Mike says the bees are already coming out out of the front entrance, so they are. So they'll reorient and figure this out. On another note, you may notice I'm wearing a nice, white, clean jacket. Uh, this is an Ultra Breeze jacket. I figured I'd give one of these a shot. Uh, and I can tell you already, it's rightly named. Um, it is very, very cool and breezy, even out here in the sun. We'll give you a great review on it here later um, after we've used it a little bit to kind of compare it to our Guardian Bee, which we do really like. Has a few shortcomings, but we do like the Guardian Bee Apparel as well. Um, so until next time, y'all keep on keeping on.